My name is Maria Isabel Acosta, and this is my story. In Venezuela, I used to live in a city that is called Barquisimeto. It's the third or fourth a city in importance in my country. Venezuela is full of natural resources. The most beautiful blue beaches, falls, mountains, snow. It's the most beautiful paradise. I grew up in a medical family. My dad is an OBGYN, and he pretty much uh, grew up in a ghetto, escaped poverty, and become a successful doctor. My dad uh, was able to performed the first IVF cycle that was done outside of the capital city in my country. One day I was 14 years old when my dad knocked in my door like in the middle of the night and he asked me if I wanted to go with him to witness a delivery. And from that day on, I, I just wanted to be an ob -GYN. I started medical school when I was 16 years old and I was able to finish when I was 23 years old. I was the only female IBF doctor in my city. And after only a few years, I had a solid practice with um, a significant amount of patients. Over the years of my training, we had to witness the installation of a communist government in my country and the systematic damage that the government did to the country was very slow but very steady. Each day was more and more difficult to do whatever we used to do. Venezuela has been gripped by the largest protests since Nicolas Maduro became president following the death of Hugo Chavez a year ago. There were several people in the streets protesting against the government. Several were murdered. Many young people were killed in the streets of my country, protesting against the government. The prices of everything was crazy. The inflation was one of the highest inflation rate on earth. We were the generation of people that saw first line the crumbling of a country. When you face a communist government, you understand that everything is about control. The government had cut the electricity in different areas of the city, including hospitals, and eventually went up with babies dying. And you start having this um, relationship with these patients that really trust you in a way, and you know, like having to go with them to a cemetery to bury a, a baby, it, it, it broke my heart completely. It was something that I just couldn't accept. Dr. Acosta, the baby's heart rate's down. Yeah. Samantha, baby heart rate's dropping a little bit and we are complete. We need to start pushing, all right? I want you to be very brave. I need some extra hands here. We're going to break the bed, guys. Samantha, this is going to be fast, all right? I need you to cooperate with us. I was pregnant at the time. and. It was a very, very stressful situation that actually ended up in preterm labor. I had to be crushed into an emergency section and my daughter was fine, but we figured out that she had a cleft pad at the type of surgery that she needed and the options we had. We decided, okay, we really wanna go to the United States to perform the surgery. Our initial plan was um, to come to Orlando and kind of have a two to three week stay while she got the surgery and eventually she recovered. And my plan was to go back and, you know, like start coming and going while we kind of figure out what was going to happen with the country. I remember a specific moment that was like one of the breaking moments. Uh, I went to Costco uh, with a friend and we had to buy some things. And eventually I came into the aisle of the diapers and there was, there were like mountains of diapers. And the last box of diapers that I got in Venezuela, 
Uh, it was a present from one of these mommies that lost her baby. And when we came back from the cemetery, she actually told me like, I really want you to have the diapers of my daughter because I know your daughter is going to need it. So when I was in that aisle, something changed inside of me that day. I, I knew that day that I, I had to stay. The core reason was that it was a mom. That was the core reason. That I wanted to provide to my daughter a safer and better environment. I didn't want her to spend the most important years of her childhood in fear. Staying in the United States meant so many things. I had to say goodbye to my family, my practice, my friends, my patients, and the life that I once dreamed it was gonna be, you know, like it was just starting from zero again. All my medical training, post-graduated training was pretty much nothing here. So I had to face the reality that if I was gonna redo everything, I was gonna start this at 36, 37 years old, and this was gonna be a project of about seven to 10 years. That, that was the truth. There were so many people that told me that this was not something doable. I was too old, my English was not good enough. I had such a strong accent. So I had to decide if I was gonna believe what some people around me was telling me, or if I was gonna believe what I thought God was telling me, that he created me with a purpose, and that his purpose on me was gonna be fulfilled no matter if I was in Venezuela or in the United States. So I made that hard decision, and one day I just decided that I was gonna believe. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> So I study from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. pretty much almost every day, except for Sabbath. I didn't have time to cry. I didn't have time to get depressed. I didn't have time to, you know, to mourn or to go through my loss. I had to study the Krebs cycle and I had to study anatomy. I think that the steps were a lifesaver for me because somehow gave me meaning and a purpose in that moment of my life. I was able to complete my certification as a doctor in a little less than two years. So I apply for, I don't know, many programs. Finally, the day arrived and all my family was in the phone, you know, like as I was opening that email and, and the email was, I did a match. That was really devastating. It was a really hard moment. I cried for a while, but then I said like, okay, what I'm gonna do next year? Because I'm gonna redo this. And everybody will ask me like, what is your plan B? And my answer was like, Repeat the plan A. I just asked myself how my daughter is gonna remember this. Will my daughter remember a mom that is frustrated because she needs to redo a residency that she already did? Or is she gonna have the memory of a mommy that somehow embraced this with dignity and with humbleness? Because what if I have something new to learn? Maybe I can be better. Maybe I can do robotic surgery that I didn't do in my country. And that's pretty much what I'm trying to teach her. Like there are always, always new things to learn. So that year we heard about the transitional year medicine 
program internship that Loma Linda University has. And I got the interview for Loma Linda. It was a completely different interview. The questions he made, he was able to see me. And I realized that probably five minutes into the interview, he was just so kind. And at that point, it was Loma Linda or nothing for me. I, I just wanted to be here, you know, and I wanted so desperately to be part of this family. It's all in our hands, this life of time. And the next year, I match as an OBGYN resident. This was the place where I felt that I could embody this concept of service, this concept of ministry that I have through medicine. There is a Bible verse that comes to my mind very often when I kind of understand what happened in my story. And in Spanish it says, a Jehová clamé mi angustia y él me escuchó. And it's basically, I cry out to the Lord and he heard my prayers. And that is exactly what happened to me. And with every change we'll always be Where hope's not lost but found It is all in our hands, it is all in our hands I have embraced this new life as an opportunity that God gave me. And sometimes what we think is our biggest loss is the exact opportunity that God has to show himself to us. It is all in our hands, it is all in our hands.